understand why Krishna is speaking all these qualities of the master why is explaining all these qualities these qualities are techniques if you practice them you will reach the same state the other day I was telling Enlightened man's words are mantras and his life is tantra, technique and his form is yantra to be meditated upon. His actions, if it is replicated in your life, it will create the same quality of consciousness in your being. For example, if you listen to the music which comes from heart, the traditional music, Indian music, Carnatic Sangeeta, uh, Carnatic music and all those things, you will have that same experience. If you listen to the music which comes from Muladhara, which comes from sex, you will have that same mood. If you meditate on some expression, you will have that same experience. Experience leads to expression. Expression leads to experience. That's a beautiful story. This again a research report. Now it has become very popular, art therapy. If you have heard about it, I don't know whether you have heard about it or not. Art therapy. <coughs> All these mad people are asked to paint. They are given canvas cloth and the paint. And you know how the, they will paint. Because there are a lot of mad people who are painting. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll on that cloth and do whatever they want. But some surprising thing, if they are every day asked to paint, within six months they come out of the madness. Because the catharsis happens, they throw everything out. 
And catharsis happens. Naturally, they get healed. And the next step is beautiful thing. There was a doctor who was doing research on this art therapy. He says, people who became mad because of money, they all paint and draw in the same way. People who became mad because of women, they all paint and draw in the same way. People who became mad because of name and fame, they all paint in the same way. There are so many reasons why you can become mad. One more small story. One guy went to the mental hospital just to see what is happening. The doctor took him to show around. The first room, he saw one person, all over his room he has written the name Lata, 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 Lata in blood. And he is sitting and chanting the word Lata, 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 Lata. The person asked what happened to him. Doctor said he wanted to marry Lata. He was not able to marry. He has become mad. That is why he is continuously doing the repeating our name and he is here. He goes around, he shows different kind of people. One person is just swimming on the floor, another one is hanging in the ceiling, another one is walking just with his hands. He sees all kinds of people. In the end, he comes back in another one room. Again, one more person is sitting and chanting Lata, 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 Lata. <laughs> in his room, all over the word Lata, Lata, Lata is written. This guy asks, what happened to him? He also wants to marry the same Lata. Doctor says, no, he married. <laughs> he married the same Lata. <laughs> there are so many reasons why you can become <laughs> mad. People who become mad because of money, they all paint in the same way. People who become mad because of women, they all paint in the same way. Because what is there that comes out? They catharsis, they throw away things, what is there? Inside their unconsciousness. Third thing, which you should understand, important thing, the doctor who was doing research on all these things, he became mad. <laughs> Three things we need to understand. First, experience only comes out as exp expression. Second thing, the quality of experience and the quality of expression, both are very closely related, associated. Third thing, very important thing, if you concentrate on the expression, you will reach experience. Here, again and again, Krishna is speaking how an enlightened ma man lives, the quality of an enlightened person, so that you will meditate on these ideas, so that you will start imbibing these ideas in your life, so that you will reach the consciousness of an enlightenment. So that you will reach the consciousness of an enlightened man. When you contemplate on these ideas, Naturally, you will start expressing it. It will sink in your being. Again and again he says, Vijitendriya. This whole chapter is just about the senses. If you can understand this one drawing and understand where the problem is, how to heal the problem, Krishna gives a beautiful technique. He gives a beautiful method how to go beyond and how to solve the problem. Now all we need to know is understand the problem. Where you are caught and where our problems are. Our whole trouble is in the mind, buddhi and ego. Let me... Beyond ego,
here is our being, Atman. Just the presence of the Atman or the light of the Atman only radiates and makes your ego work. It reads no Atman. <laughs> Just by the presence of the Atman, the ego works. The whole trouble is here, where you identify yourself, where you start thinking, what is there for me? How I am related? How I am going to gain from this? Or how I am going to lose? Here is where the whole trouble starts. If somehow this is erased, this is removed, from this system, the Atman directly starts radiating its energy, its stages through your senses. That is why the enlightened people will have sharp senses. Their senses are not contaminated. Whether their vision or their hearing will be sharp and deep because it is not corrupted by buddhi and ego. They have not lost their sensitivity. Please be very clear, only a man whose being is clear, he will have pure senses. His senses will be sharp and alive. A man who continuously uses his senses who uses his senses too much, he abuses it. He will not have the energy or stages in his senses. Man who has used and abused his senses, first thing which will happen to him is he will lose the smell. The smell will be lost. If you have lost smell, please be very clear. Immediately you need emergency treatment. You need to get admitted in ICU of spirituality. You need, immediately need meditation. Meditation is basic need for you. Again, Krishna comes out in the next sloka. Suhroon Mitra Yudha Asinam Adat Adayastat Veshtya Vanduhu Vandushu Sadushva Vichabhabeshu Samavuddhir Visishyate Suhroon Mitra Yudha Asina Madhyas Tatvesh Yubhapandushu Sadushva Vichabhabeshu Samavuddhir Visishyate Person is considered still further advanced when he regards honest well-wishers affectionate benefactors, the neutral mediators, the envious, the friends and enemies, the pious and the sinners, with all with an equal mind. This happens really when you become enlightened. When you become enlightened, there is nothing to be achieved. There is nothing to be gained. Automatically, your being starts respecting everybody. Please be very clear. Here they use the word equal. But the exact translation should be unique. You will not treat everybody equal. You will respect everybody as unique beings. Treating equal is different. Treating them as unique is different. You understand everybody's uniqueness and respect. Treating everybody equal is different. Sometimes, when we say the word treat, treat everybody equally, we start disrespecting everybody. We think that is the way I, I do. <laughs> Let me disrespect everybody. Instead of raising others, we come down. Somebody asks Ramakrishna, 
Ramakrishna is such a humble soul. Anybody comes to see him, he will first do the namaskar. He will only first do the namaskar. Before they start, he will do the namaskar. They ask, why do you do namaskar? One egoistic guy, one egoistic pandit, this education and ego, and especially the spiritual education, man who has read all the scriptures and not become enlightened, he will be the being, or I can say, he is the person who is already in hell. He is already in hell. Because he will have so much of ego. He knows the tricks of the trade. He knows the tricks of the trade. But he doesn't have investment or capital to do the business. He knows the tricks of the trade, but he doesn't have capital to do the business or courage to do the business. He will be a difficult person. One pundit came to meet him. Like this one pundit who is well read. But who is not enlightened. He comes to see him. He bows down. Ramakrishna as usual. He pays his respect. The pandit says, after all he is younger than me, he can do namaskar. He can bow down to me. His ego. And Ramakrishna says, by doing namaskar, I try to bring him to my level. But, Accepting it in an egoistic way, he tries to bring me to his level. <laughs> the Pandit is trying to bring Ramakrishna to his level. Ramakrishna is trying to bring him to his level. So be very clear. When we treat equally, we may bring people to our level. Let us not do that. Treat everybody uniquely. Understand, every being is unique. There is no equality. Here we need to understand every being is unique. When you understand every being is unique, you will start respecting every being. You will understand every being has its own unique place. We are all not same. We are all unique. God is an artist. That is why he carved each one of us. He painted each one of us. He is not engineer. If he is an engineer, you would have just ordered 10,000 piece, Mr. India. 1 million, Mrs. Miss Universe. 1 million, Miss Universe, you would have produced. All of us will be looking same. He is not an engineer to do mass production. He is an artist. He paints every one of us. He cars every one of us. That is why we are all so unique. All of us are so unique. Because God is a painter. When you understand, each one of us are unique. Everybody is unique. You will start respecting every being. One more important thing you need to understand. Even your enemy is needed for your life. You would have learned thousands of things from your enemy. Without enemy, you wouldn't have achieved what you achieved. Even enemy contributes to your life. Please be very clear. When you are in depression, if you remember the enemy, you will come out. <laughs> and you will start the fight again. Even your enemy contributes to your life. You don't know what all the ways people to contribute, contribute to your life. There was a great sannyasi, very famous sannyasi, and highly respected all over the world. Suddenly one day, his close disciple somehow finds an important secret about him. In his room, he has got his ex-wife's photograph. Ex-wife's photograph. This guy somehow sees that and he asks, Master, I thought you were such a great person. I never expected this from you. 
Why? Why still you are having a photograph in your room? He says, whenever I wanted to leave the sannyas, I just see your photograph. <laughs> whenever I wanted to drop sannyas life, I just see a photograph. Immediately, I get my vairagya. So you don't know who are all serving, what all purposes. So be very clear, even your enemy may be playing a role in your being, in your personality, in your growth. You can't say somebody is needed in your life and somebody is not necessary. So just like your friends, your enemy also will be, may be playing a role. When you understand, each and every being is unique. You will see everybody with the same mind or in the same way. One more word here Krishna says, the pious and the sinners. Please be very clear, there is no such thing as sin except calling human beings as sinner. There is no other sin on the planet Earth. There is no such thing as sin. Let me tell you a small story. One monk, Sanyas, he was sitting in a forest and meditating. He had a small ashram, hut. One night, one man came to the hut and begged, Swami, can you give me little food and can you allow me to stay here till tomorrow morning? He said, why not? Please come. He gave food and shelter. Next day morning, the man is about to leave. Swami asked, who are you? This guy said, I am a thief. <laughs> Just yesterday night, I robbed the palace. I tried to escape from the police. I came here and you gave me food and shelter. I thank you. He went away. Immediately, this monk started weeping. Oh God, how big sin I committed. I gave food and shelter for a thief. He started weeping. Please, oh God, save me from this sin. In few minutes, he heard booming voice from the heaven. That voice is also weeping, crying. Monk asks, oh God, why are you weeping? God says, you gave food and shelter for him one day you are weeping. You committed a sin. I give food and shelter for him 365 days. <laughs> where will I go and wash? Where will I go what? Go and wash my sins? Be very clear. God accepts everybody as we are. The idea of sin and merit is created by the people who created the society. People who created the society. Immediately next question will raise. Then can we do whatever we want, Swamiji? <laughs> Man who understands will never disturb others. Man who understands the spiritual science will never disturb others. Again and again I tell people, your sin or merit should not be based on fear or greed. If it is just based on heaven or hell, I don't think we have become matured people, matured beings. Our sin or merit should be out of our understanding, not out of heaven or hell. Be very clear. Don't live a disciplined life thinking of heaven or hell. Let the discipline happen to you as an understanding. As an understanding. If you are afraid of cop and following the speed rules, whenever you don't see any light, what do you do? A small temptation. Why not raise little bit? And especially in LA when traffic is not there, we always try at least a few miles. There is a grace smile. These people who drive me. <laughs> These guys, I always shout at them. 
hey, what is this? The board says 65 are going in 80. No, 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 there's 10 mile gray smiles. <laughs> the gray smile. Always you try. See, actually, putting one feet away, that has got a taste. Trying to escape from the rule has got its own taste. Especially when something is forbidden, it becomes really tasty. <laughs> the forbidden fruit is always tasty. I don't think Adam would have eaten that fruit unless the God is forbidden that fruit. He ate just because God has said don't eat. He was living in that garden for how many years we don't know. He has not taken a single fruit. He has not tasted a single fruit. He was living happily. It is actually God who tempted, not the snake. The story is wrong. The story says God said don't eat and snake tempted. But God tempted by making the rule don't eat. Whenever you listen to a rule, automatically you try to go beyond. You try to escape. Let your morality be not based on fear and greed. That is why in Padanjali, there is a beautiful word, Yama. Yama means discipline. If you understand your life is going to end in death, if you understand the death is the result of your life. If your consciousness imbibes, starts thinking, meditating about death, automatically you will be disciplined. If you start meditating on death, you will completely restructure your whole thinking system on life. Your whole life will be restructured. If you start thinking about Yama, Yama will happen in your life. Both, for both discipline and death, for both we use the same word in Sanskrit. Yama and Yama. Both same spelling, same word. If you imbibe, if you understand the death is going to happen to you, automatically you will imbibe discipline in your life. Discipline happens to you when you realize the death, when you realize the life is going to end. Let your discipline happen, let your morality happen only out of understanding of death, not out of fear or greed. Now, given by our devotees, last few days I have not answered. After seeing these few questions, we will enter into a technique given by Sri Krishna to go beyond the mind, to awaken our senses, to look in. Dear Swamiji, how can one go about getting closer to the present moment? How can we reduce the number of our number of thoughts per second? This is from the second day. Second day I was explaining about the TPS. Thoughts per second. Who put this question? Is the person is here? Here it, is, it says, day two you are God. The moment you ask, how can I start living in the present moment? You already started living in the future. The very question, you have escaped. You have missed the present moment. You see, when you ask, how can I start living in the present moment? You wanted a technique. You wanted assurance that you must be able to live in the present moment throughout your life. You don't need anything to, to live in the present moment. Just live in this moment. That's all. Nothing else needs to be done. But you are not ready to stop. You don't feel 
the fulfill by living in this moment you want assurance that i will live in the present moment throughout my life teach me something so that i will not forget to live in the present moment always that is what you are asking when you ask this question the moment you want assurance about the future you missed the present be very clear future can never be assured whenever you remember come back to present that's enough nothing else is necessary whenever you remember come back to present moment and if you live in this moment this moment if you are at present naturally next moment also you will be in the present because next moment takes birth from this moment this moment is mother next moment is son if you are in the present moment in this moment next moment also you will be automatically in the present moment if you are postponing escaping from this moment from next moment also you will escape so be very clear a simple technique to be in the present moment is just be in the present moment at 0 tps at 0 thoughts per second does the past present and future all exist within that moment nitya kripanidhi yes person nitya kripanidhi has put this question when your thoughts per second is zero when you don't have thoughts past and the future both disappears when the past and future has disappeared what is you can't even call that as a present present is present as long as you have past and future when that too has disappeared what is 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 tatada buddha says tatada what is you can't even call that as a present nitya and Br- shankara says as brahman how do you know the difference between being an intellectual idiot versus the development of the intellectual ability that you speak about in regards to the shastra again nitya kripa nidhi beautiful question if you are torturing yourself and torturing others with the knowledge which you are having you are an intellectual idiot if you are living happily and giving happiness to others with the knowledge which you are having you are having intelligence that's all man who has got intelligence will increase his peace and joy in his being and will increase peace and joy for others intelligence always creates more bliss intelligence is bliss understand is four thing intelligence compassion energy and bliss all four are one and the same when your atman expresses through head it is intelligence when your atman expresses through heart it is compassion when your atman expresses through being it is energy when you are when your atman is there without expressing it is bliss all four are one and the same if you are intelligent you will be blissful and you will radiate bliss there is one more question it is written but i am not able to read if you heard that joke who knows how to write friends not read remember the joke and laugh by yourself <laughs> the person who wrote this question if you are here and come out and ask the question i will be ans- happy to answer it's written in black pen
there are many questions which I have answered in today's lecture. So I am not answering them. Respected Swamiji, committed one asks, how or which key is greatest importance to be rid of habit attachment? This is a nice question. Beautiful question, especially the one, one word, committed one asks, so that I can give the honest answer. Always questions can be answered in two ways. Socially polite, that's one way. Another one is honest answer. <laughs> Here I can give an honest answer because the question says committed on us. Means she is going to go and follow. If the person is not ready to follow, I can give just consolation, don't worry. Just pray to God. <laughs> I'll do something. It is very easy to give a socially polite answer. But here, I would give the real answer. The one and only key to get rid of attachment is meditation. Looking in. All your intellectual analysis, all your intellectual stuff, be very clear. It can give you courage, but it cannot give you solution. It can give you little courage, to walk, but it cannot give you solution. The one and only way to get rid of attachment is meditation. Meditation is the one and only key. What is the difference between dharma and purpose? Purpose drives you crazy. With purpose, you stop enjoying the life. You start thinking only about the goal. With dharma, you live the very life. You start enjoying the path. Dharma means enjoying the path. Purpose means enjoying the goal. If you are enjoying the path, you are in dharma. If you are enjoying the goal, you are towards the purpose. Respected Swamiji, of the koshas, ananda is greatest. How to maintain ananda in daily life? Beautiful story. One Sufi master, his name is Abdullah, is a great enlightened master. He always used to be in ecstasy. Always he is in joy, bliss. One of his disciples asked him, Master, how are you so blissful? Always in ecstasy. I have never seen you suffering. I have never seen you with a long face. How? He says, early morning when I get up, I just ask myself, Abdullah, what do you want today? Today you want to be blissful or you want suffering. I ask myself, naturally what mind will choose? It chooses I want to be blissful. Then immediately I tell the mind, then be blissful, that's all. <laughs> we may think, how can it be so simple, Swamiji? Be very clear. You know your 24 hour routine. Try, just tomorrow morning, once you try. You know next 24 hours what is going to happen. Very rare accidents happen. Accidents are very rare. In average, normal routine, you know what next 24 hours is going to happen. Accidents are lottery winning. These two are rare. They are not happening every day. So, till tomorrow morning, 
what is your next routine what is your routine you know decide whether to face that routine with bliss or with suffering whether to face that routine with joy or with the usual face with our regular face decide by yourself when extraordinary things like accident or lottery winning happens that is different in ordinary way in your regular life you know the routine you have the choice and whether you go with a long face or a smiling face the routine is going to be same the routine is going to be same that's why i always tell people pain is inevitable suffering is choice pain may be inevitable but suffering is choice you have one thing in choice you can choose your attitude you can choose your inner space your inner space can be chosen by you that is up to you that's only your decision he says whenever my mind say whenever my, my when my mind says i'll be happy i just tell the mind then be blissful that's all it is purely your choice purely your choice hell or heaven is your conscious choice it is nobody else's choice we will ask another one question always if my mind says i want to suffer what to do <laughs> then let you suffer that's all what is the wrong if your mind wants to enjoy suffering even a suffering becomes enjoyment for you that is why you want to enjoy suffering in a way suffering becomes enjoyment for you so be very clear ask your mind when you get up early morning from the bed ask yourself what do you want if your mind says bliss just tell your mind be blissful over single conscious decision can change the quality of your life every day morning don't decide for 3 days you will forget don't decide for one week you will forget every day decide then people will think let me decide for my whole life today itself swami ji no you will forget you will be back to the same you will have the same face again tomorrow when you come back no don't decide for your whole life just decide for one day decide only for one day only then you will be able to maintain otherwise you will have our same old face our natural face a small story about this natural face father the president of a monastery he is teaching the young novices to preach how to speak in the public <coughs> he is taking class how to preach he is training them when you speak your whole body should express your whole face should show express the idea which you are expressing when you speak about heaven your eyes should show that surprise or the amazing mood or your whole body should show the bliss you should express it clearly the joy of heaven your face should shine when you speak about hell just be as you are <laughs> people will understand <laughs> at least in our life let us not maintain the face of the hell vivekananda says if you are depressed don't come out of the room enough of suffering is there in the world don't go around and spread little more suffering <laughs> respected swami ji what is the difference between bhagavad gita and maha gita referred as ashtavakra gita ashtavakra gita is also one of the beautiful book 
मोर देन फिफ्टी एट गीता अवेलेबल राम गीता शिव गीता अनुगीता व्यास गीत व्याद गीता अष्टावक्र गीता देर आर सो मेनी गीता अवेलेबल बट नथिंग कंपेर्ड टू दिस भगवद गीता दिस इज एव्रीथिंग पुट टूगेदर अंड समथिंग मोर द अष्टावक्र गीता इज ओनली फॉर द पीपल who want the spiritual experience here bhagavad gita is for every being see one thing if i start speaking from where i am it will never benefit you i should start speaking from where you are not from where i am but from where you are ashtavakra gita ashtavakra starts speaking from where he is but krishna in bhagavad gita krishna starts speaking where you are so krishna can give you experience because he starts where you are standing he starts from where you are standing dear swami ji yesterday you said that i am god i am not sure about this i did not find a single quality of god in me please explain whether you believe it or believe it or not accept it or not realize it or not want it or not you are god please be very clear whether you accept it or not believe it or not want it or not experience it or not you are god you may be thinking what is this swami ji i don't find a single quality of divine in me how can i be god see some fishes go along with the stream along with the current some fishes go against the current there are some being who just float with the existence divine there are some being who always go against the divine who oppose the divine but one thing you should understand whether you flow along with the current or go against the current you are in the water fish is in the water same way whether you flow with the current become enlightened or you go against the current think you are not enlightened you are enlightened the choice is not whether you are god or not the choice is only you have only one choice either you can realize it and live blissfully or you can suffer without realizing it but whether you realize it or not you are god in that there is no choice you being god in that there is no choice you have only one choice if you want you can realize and express it joyfully or you can suffer but you have no other choice whether you float with the current or go against the current you are in the water fish is in the water so if you are not divine you cannot even inhale and exhale it is just that energy which is working inside your system inside your being so be very clear one more thing again and again and again society creates guilt in you that you are not enough unto yourself please be very clear society sets a standard and it never lets you feel the divinity in you first thing which you need to understand you are beyond body and mind all your guilt is related to body and mind so don't have a standard which is given to you by society to measure whether you are god or not that standard can never be fulfilled the social standard can be can never be fulfilled and one more thing the moment you allow the guilt in you you are ready to be exploited anybody wants to exploit you 
first puts the guilt in you. The person who wants to exploit you in the physical level, he makes you believe that you are not strong enough. The person who wants to exploit you in the level of beauty, they first make you feel you are not beautiful enough. Only then all the cosmetic products will be sold. Why do you think continuously these cosmetic companies conduct the beauty contests? So that they will make you feel guilty that you are not beautiful. Be very clear, you are enough unto yourself. Never run behind anybody's measurement. You are beautiful by yourself. Why should you bother about somebody's measurement? Each one of you are unique flowers. If God is an engineer, he would have created 10 billion Miss Universe and 10 billion Mr. Universe. But he is not an engineer. You, you need a little bit of foolishness to be an engineer. God is not an engineer. He is a painter. He is an artist. He paints every one of you. That is why every one of your dimensions are different. Every one of you are unique. The moment you start having the guilt, I am not beautiful, you start buying all cosmetic products and you try all color paintings. You try all possible makeup. Same way, in the spiritual field also, the so-called religious people put guilt in you. They just start putting guilt in you. You are not that. You are not this. First thing, they start giving you the ideas which is impractical. Vivekananda says beautifully, never teach a man to be truthful. It is very difficult. Teach him how to be. Never give dead moral things. Never give dead teachings. Give them the technology. Give them the science. The so-called religious people who don't know the science by themselves, who don't know the technology to transform the energy by themselves, who has not transformed their energy, like a parrot, they repeat the advice or morality, impossible goals from scriptures to you and create guilt in you. That is why again and again I used to tell people, never listen to a person who is not enlightened. Never listen to a person who is not experienced by himself. He will give you all impractical ideas. The other day as he was telling, Dale Carnegie writes a big book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. He committed suicide. <laughs> impractical. His teachings are impractical. He himself has not experienced. So be very clear. Never listen anything. Never take anything from an unenlightened man. When a person is not enlightened, he creates only more complications. Even your so-called moral ideas. Never a person should be taught be more good. You should, you should be taught how to be good. The technology should be given. The science should be given. When you don't give the technology, only the advice, you create more trouble for others. The person who receives only advice, not the technology, he starts creating deep guilt in himself and he becomes schizophrenia. Please be very clear, in three level guilt is created in you. One is physical level, you are not strong enough. Only when you start believing you are not strong enough, you will become slave, you will be controlled, you will come under control. You are not beautiful enough, then now you are gullible for all the fashion shows, all the cosmetic products, they can sell all their products, they can dump all their products on your head. The third, you are not spiritual enough, you are not pure enough, you are not a spiritual being. This three guilt is created in you by the people who are doing this three business, by the people who are doing this three business. 
enlightened master will always liberate you from all the guilts. Enlightened man is a person who liberates you from all these three guilts. Never carry guilt. All the guilt is created in you by the people who are cunning enough to hide their personal life. That's all. A small story. Three women, they die, reach Yama's abode. Yamadharma is sitting there for judgment. First, he calls the first lady. She comes and he asks, did you live a pure life? She says, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Lord. I lived a pure life. I, I was 100% truthful to my husband. Then Yama just sees the record. All right. You lived a beautiful life. Have a golden key. He gives a golden key and says, first class AC suit in the heaven. Go and enjoy. She goes. Next lady, she comes. Yama asks, did you live a pure life? Almost I lived. Physically, I never did anything wrong. But mentally, once or twice, when I see some movies, mentally I did one or two mistakes. But physically, I lived a pure life. Yama sees the report. All right. At least you are honest. You agreed. You told the truth. I have the silver key. Second class. Go and enjoy. He sends that person to heaven. Third lady, she comes. Yes. Did you live a pure life? She puts her head down and says, Lord, forgive me. I was an actress. <coughs> and I did everything. Whatever you can imagine, and whatever you can't imagine, I have done everything. <laughs> then Emadama just looks this side and that side. He says, I have my room key and I'll be there. <laughs> Understand all your morality, the guilt created in you by the people who have covered their life, who give their room keys. So look into the Life, clearly, don't create guilt in you and suffer. Don't feel you are not God. The guilt created in you by the so-called religious people only makes you feel you are not God. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, you are God. You have only one choice. You can realize it and enjoy. Live the life blissfully. Or... You can suffer without realizing it. That's all. There is nothing else can be done about it. One thing is sure, you are God. Now it is time to look in. Now it is time to tune ourselves to the highest teaching given by Parabrahma Krishna. Sri Krishna, in this Dhyana Yoga, let me repeat this sloka, let me recite the sloka, then we will enter into the meditation technique given by Sri Krishna to go beyond the mind, to make your senses alive. सुचरो देशे प्रतिष्ठाप्यस्तिरम् आसनमात्मानः नात्युष्ठितम् नादिनीसम् सैलाजनगुसोत्तरम् तत्रैगक्रम् मनक्रत्वा यदचित्तेन्द्रियक्रिया उपविश्यासने यंग्यात् योगमात्माविसुद्धाये Samam gaya sirok grivam dara yanna chalam stiraham. Samprekshana sigakram swamdi saschana valogayan. Prasantat prasantatma vigadabhi brahmachari pradeshtitaham. 
मनसम्यमस्चित्त आसीदर ब्यूटिफुल फोर श्लोक विच डिस्क्राइब द टेक्निक लेट मी गिव यू द ट्रांसलेशन टू प्रैक्टिस योगा वन शुड गो टू सेक्लूडेड प्लेस and should lay the kusa grass on the ground and then cover it with a deer skin and a soft cloth the seed should be neither too high nor too low and should be situated in a sacred place the yogi should then sit on it very firmly and practice yoga to purify the heart by controlling his mind senses and activities and fixing the mind on one point few things you should go to the secluded place why whatever you say in the house phone will ring cell phone will ring somebody will knock some advertising agencies will call to move away from these disturbances that is why secluded place this kusha and these skin all those things are like insulation so that the energy created by you will not be taken away by the earth but now you don't have to bother about that because you are already sitting in a chair little above the ground that is enough and it should the seat should neither be too high nor too low it should be comfortable that's all next one should hold one's body neck and head straight and stare steadily at the tip of the nose thus with an unagitated subdued mind devoid of fear completely free from completely living with existence one should meditate upon me within the heart and make me the ultimate goal of life yesterday what meditation technique we did the same little updated here krishna is updating yesterday what we did is a initial level technique now he gives little updated technique here he says three instruction one head neck and backbone should be in a straight line next you should fix your eyes on the tip of the nose means natu- if you look into the if you look at the tip of the nose naturally your awareness will settle down on the third eye your concentration will settle on the agnya chakra the same as we did yesterday third instruction important thing should meditate on me as a supreme goal when he says me is means your atman if you like you can meditate on the form of krishna with a flute and pick up feather and all those things but i always prescribe